What's up, gals? Thanks again for being here with us. We have Trina Glines today. She's a relationship trainer, coach, and speaker, and founder of the Taming Jane Academy. She's going to be talking to us about strengthening our marriage. If you need to have a kind of a critical conversation with your husband or with your sons, when is the best moment to do it since they are so single task oriented? What, what advice do you have when you're like, okay, well, I really need them to focus on me. When's that best moment to do that? Such a great question. Thank <laughs> you for asking that question because this is what we get ourselves in trouble with all the time. Um, you asking for a time to talk. You ask him for a time to talk. So say he's in his office and he's working. First of all, you've got to learn how to interrupt single task focus nicely. Okay. Because how often has this happened to you? You just walk in wherever your man is and you just start chatting away. And after about, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds, he turns and looks at you and goes, what were you saying? And you're like, <laughs> oh my God. Too many times. Too many times has that you're, happened to me. Why did you not stop me before I started spending the 30 seconds talking? You know, you'd, but he honestly yes. didn't hear you. He didn't hear you. He was singly focused on whatever he was doing. If it was watching the football game, I don't care if it was eating a sandwich. He was paying attention to the pickle in his mouth. Whatever it was, <laughs> it's, they are singly focused. It's a real thing. So if you walked in, your husband's eating and you walk up and one of the greatest ways to interrupt single test focus is actually touch. Like if you went up and touched his arm and then he just waited and he just look at you like, Oh, hey, hun. You know, <laughs> he's like, oh, I've got his attention right there. I can talk to him. He's now focused on me. Or you can just walk in and say, hey, hun. And you wait. Do not start talking until they acknowledge that you're there. And then be respectful. Just like we like to say, how many times have your kids, mom, mom, hey, mom, hey, mom, and you're in the middle of something? And you're like, oh, just give me a minute, right? Yes. <laughs> They're always in the middle of something. <laughs> always. <laughs> so once, you know, if he's in his office, he's working or whatever, you say, hey, hon, I have something I need to share with you. When would be a good time we could chat? And he can look at it and go, hey, can you give me 15 minutes? Yeah, that'd be great. There you go. Easy as that. Yeah. It's just interrupting that single test focus, having respect that their minds don't work like ours. We can actually fold the laundry, have a conversation and be thinking about what we're going to make for dinner. Hmm. That blows their minds. Like, I don't know, a lot of husbands, if you're folding laundry while you're having a conversation with them, they think you're not listening. And they'll like kind of sit back like, is she really hearing me? Because he couldn't do that. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> it does. It makes a lot of sense, actually, <laughs> as you're saying this. So what is one of the biggest questions that you get from some from some of your clients about their marriages when it comes to the different languages? What's one of the biggest questions, would you say? Mm -hmm. um, gosh, that's a good question. Probably, probably helping women recognize by the time, well, I shouldn't say all my clients, often ladies, and this is the mom conference, so they all understand, you're exhausted mm -hmm. and your needs aren't being met. And my whole course really is around, I'm mean, the whole reason to learn the language of men and what I teach women is to help ladies get their needs met because you're exhausted. Right. And, um, and you start carrying around this intensity. I call it the intense woman. Um, because now it's been long enough. You've asked for certain things and he hasn't followed through with it, or he was good for a little bit and then he's reverted back. And so your feelings just kept keeping her over and over again to where then resentment starts to build and resentment kills love period. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's probably one of the biggest things like, where's my happy self? Why am I not like I was before? We'll never be the same. After we have children, I mean, we're so busy and life changes, but it can get more beautiful and it should get more beautiful. It's going to be perfectly chaotic. <laughs> uh, but I think that's the biggest thing is helping women with that 
um, giving and adapting part of them to where they don't give and adapt themselves away so much that their needs are never met and they're not having the joy and happiness they should be feeling for dedicating their life to another. Right. What is that balance between, because when you talk about the different languages, obviously there has to be some give and take. You're going to have to be a little more patient, a little more compromising than maybe you were before once you understand this. So what's the balance between compromise and also getting your needs met, what you want? Um, Well, it's being able to communicate to him in his language, understanding how he works, how he thinks just like that. Like now, you know, if I need to talk to my man, I need to politely interrupt single task focus and not be frustrated that he can't do multiple things at a time. That He can't hear me plus help with dinner and, you know, listen to the kids in the background. So now, yeah, you do need to be a little bit more patient and it's a learning curve. Like you really have to be patient with yourself as you, as you learn it. Um, but you're going to be so thoroughly rewarded by doing it. And so really the balance is probably more being um, patient with yourself in learning the process and then to just learning um, that it's okay for you to have needs. Because hmm. a lot of times, I mean, I know in my situation, I had given and adapted so much that I, I, I didn't even know what my needs were. So often in my class, I'm, like we dive into like them even trying to discover what their needs are. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. Because let me give you an example of, of, of needs. So men and women have total opposite relationships with needs. Men have an immediate and intense relationship with needs. Immediate and intense. If they are singly focused and all of a sudden hunger cuts through, bam, I am hungry, I am hungry, I am hungry. They no longer can focus here, they gotta eat. You're sitting here, we're interviewing, it's like noon, you could have some hunger pains. What do we do as women when we're hungry? Uh, depends on what we're, what else we're doing. Honestly. Yeah, right. Everything else is going to come first. Yes. Right? We'll even feed the kids and forget to feed ourselves. Oh yeah. Right. Like when men need to go pee, what do they do? They go <laughs> pee. When women need to go pee, we remember two hours later, I still have not peed. I mean, that's a pretty immediate need. <laughs> You know, but we just don't have the connection with our needs like men do. And so because of that, it often makes men look selfish. It will make them look selfish when truly they're not. They just have a better, a a stronger relationship with their needs. And when you understand these things, it's like you, you're able to get rid of all of these assumptions, these hurt feelings. So in answer to that question in a roundabout way, I think it's really helping women connect to their needs. And like you said, finding that balance of, well, how do you do that? And, and I think part of that balance too is teaching women, you are responsible to get your needs met Hmm. because we often expect our husbands to meet those needs for us. Right. And we are responsible to do it. Hmm. It's not fair to them. It's not fair like for them to guess, because the problem is we as women, if we're together, if say, you know, I'm with my daughter and we're out and about, I have intuition with her. I can feel what her needs might be. We have that as women with our children, with our friends, with our moms, you know, like we're around, we have that intuition. Men don't have that, but we assume they should. So like when we're kind of mopey and we're not, you know, we think he should know what we need have no idea. And they so want us to tell them. (laughs) They hate the guessing game so bad. So they, yeah. And so we just keep getting our feelings hurt over and over and over again. You're obviously so knowledgeable. You have the best personality. And and so thank you so much for doing this with us. Trina Glines, relationship trainer, coach, and speaker, and founder of the Taming Jane Academy. Thank you so much for being here with me today and taking the time. You're so welcome. Thank you.